It's from section 3.5 homework, problem number 17. The black is our original equation. If we differentiate the, in all the terms implicitly, we get to the blue. And we'll keep all the terms with the dy dx on the left, factor them out, move the 2x to the right by subtracting it, then divide this by both sides, and we get our answer dy dx is equal to that. Problem number 63, we're supposed to find horizontal and vertical tangent lines. So the black is our original equation. Find the derivative to get to blue. Then we'll keep all the dy dx's on the left, move everything else to the right, solve for dy dx. So there is our derivative, our slope. If we have a horizontal tangent line, that means the slope equals zero. In other words, set the numerator equal to zero. If you set that equal to zero, you get your x value for your um, horizontal tangent lines. And for the vertical, we're going to set the denominator equal to zero because you can't have a zero in the denominator. So if you set that equal to zero and solve it, you'll get your vertical tangents. The thing to note here is once you've solved for x and y, you're going to plug it back into the original equation. And because we have a y squared in there, there's a good chance you'll have both um, two answers for each of those, a single x value, but two y values for each of those. Number 65, we're trying to find the derivative. And we can use the product rule. And so here's the step of the product rule. Simplifying a little bit, we get to the green. 67, for this one, we're going to find the derivative using logarithms. So I've already taken the log of everything spread out. Then we're taking the derivative to get to the blue. We're doing that um, using the properties of logs with derivatives, which we get this. And because we have the derivative of ln of y, we get 1 over y dy dx. To get dy dx by itself, multiply both sides by y. So we have all of these individual derivatives inside the parentheses times y. y was equal to that from the original. In problem number 53, we're asked to find the second derivative. So black to red, I found the, the first derivative, solve for dy dx. Then I'm taking the second derivative of this. So it's the derivative of the left with respect to x gives us d squared y over dx squared. So the derivative of both sides with respect to x, the right side, we have to use the quotient rule. And um, from blue to green, the big difference is I simplified that negative, negative makes it a positive. But the dy dx, I made a substitution. Negative x over y is what dy dx is equal to. So we plug that in. And then from green to blue, I just multiplied everything by y. So we didn't have this fraction within the fraction. So there's our blue. One thing we notice though, is that in the numerator, there's this negative y squared minus x squared. If you factor a negative out, so negative quantity y squared plus x squared for negative quantity x squared plus y squared, from the very beginning, we know that x squared plus y squared equals 4, which makes the numerator become just a negative 4, and it's going to be over y cubed. Number 55 is a very similar problem. First step, find the derivative. Derivative is this. Take the derivative of both sides again. So here is our second derivative substitute what dy dx is equal to. That's how we get to the red. Multiply everything by y again to get to here. And I see that x squared minus y squared equals 36. Um, if we multiply everything by negative, that would give us a negative x squared plus y squared equals negative 36. Negative x squared plus y squared. And that's essentially what we have right here. So we can take this out and plug negative 36 in for it. Number 59, we're supposed to find the equation of the tangent line through the point 4, 3 and through the point negative 3, comma 4. So first off, find the derivative, solve for dy dx. And to find the derivative at the point 4, 3, we're plugging it into this formula over here. That slope comes out to negative 4 over 3. So the equation in point slope form is this. Um, to get the normal line, everything is the same because it goes through the same point. But instead of the slope of negative 4 thirds, it's the opposite reciprocal. If you look over here to the right, here is our work for the point negative 3, comma 4. In problem number 89, we're supposed to find all of the points on this graph that have a slope equal to 3 fourths. So x squared plus y squared equals 100. If I graphed it, it would make a circle. The center is at 0, 0. The radius is 10. Um, I find the derivative of it. The derivative is going to be negative x over y. So I skipped a few steps because I've been doing quite a few like this. Here is the derivative. The derivative is the slope at a point, so we're going to set this derivative equal to the given slope, cross multiply, and then if I solve this for x, x in terms of y, x is negative 3 fourths y. So I'm going to use that in the original equation, combining them together, plug negative 3 fourths y in for x in the original problem, square that, 
combine like terms, do the algebra to get y squared solved. So multiply both sides by 16 over 25, take the square root, divide, and we get y equals 8. My answer here. So y is equal to 8. If we plug that back in, um, x squared plus 64 equals 100, means that x squared equals 36. So x could be positive 6 or negative 6.